Hey, thanks for joining. In today's video, where I just want to discuss the idea of using a flash or speed light for digitizing or scanning your film instead of a constant LED video light, which is what most of us currently use. Because I've always heard in comments on videos and whatnot that a flash will give you the best quality conversions, the best film scans for some reason. And I always wanted to try it. Ever since 2020, it's been something that I've been meaning to try and I only finally just did recently. I ran a very short kind of rudimentary experiment and I wanted to share those results with you. So if you just want the TLDR, the, the short answer to it, uh, was using a flash better than an LED? It kind of was a little bit, but it wasn't worth the hassle. So that's the, that's the TLDR. That's if you just want the short answer. But if you want to stick around and nerd out a little bit about the science of this and my experimentation and reasons for it, feel free to listen in and stick around. So like I said, people would generally comment, usually on my scanning videos, uh, have you ever tried using a flash? Would using a flash not be better? You know, isn't it brighter? There's all these purported benefits, including the fact that yes, it's brighter, so you can get very high shutter speeds. You almost eliminate the possibility of getting micro vibrations and losing sharpness in your scans. And that is something that I noticed, okay? So that's probably the main benefit. Secondly, and this is the elephant in the room, does the light source coming from this give you better quality colors when you're dealing with C41 or even slide film? And that's what I was really curious about because I'd read about it in forums, you know, the Negative Lab Pro forums. I know there's people out there, maybe even watching this video who have or continue to use a speed light instead of using an LED for whatever other benefits there might be. So I was always curious and I, had been meaning to try it. It's just that it's difficult due to practical reasons. So if you think about most film holders, it's not that easy to get something that's shaped like this or close to it underneath the actual film holder, whichever one you might be using. The next big problem is that with such a bright source of light, you need to direct it carefully and diffuse it adequately. So you need uh, something that has really good diffusion. You can just pop one of these diffusers on top that might be enough, but I don't think it is in my um, experiments at least. You need either some kind of sheet of something. And that's why I had always intended to try this experiment using the EFH, because the beauty of this is it has the diffuser built in and you could also use it sideways. Initially, I thought I would build a rig where I could you know, easily just place it on its side, but then I just thought it would be too difficult to mount the camera and get a good level uh, setup. So what I did instead, the way I ran this experiment was I used the negative supply, copy stand, camera on top as usual, got a little Ikea box, uh, placed the flash in there with a, a wireless cable, sorry, a wired cable connecting the flash to the camera, uh, made sure I tried to get the flash so that the head was fairly level with the, the horizontal plane that this would be on, uh, ran some experiments, was getting major hot spots, tried to use the wide angle flip out diffuser sort of thingy to spread the light more, that helped a little bit, wasn't quite enough. So I then used the included Canon little bounce diffuser instead, which then eliminated the hotspot problem. Okay, so I was then able to get a nice clean diffused light onto the negative in order to capture it. The next thing was trying to uh, illuminate the negative so I could focus because with a flash, you know, you don't have the constant light. So I still had to use an LED. This is part of the cumbersome <laughs> problem with this uh, to illuminate the, the film to focus from shot to shot or from just the beginning. So I did that. Uh, and then the next issue is trying to get the, the power right. You have to do trial and error. So because the flash is so bright, I had to turn this down, at least this model, the 430 EX um, RT, EX3, 164th power or one, one out of 32, somewhere around there, very low power setting on the flash. And it was still quite bright. And that was for me to be able to scan at the optimal f-stop of around f9, uh, f8 to f11 somewhere. So after having everything rigged up and um, setting it up, I did some scans and had a look at my results. And what I wanted to do was compare them directly to scans where I'd used an LED light from the same negative. And I did a few comparison shots and yeah, what I found is a subtle improvement in the color conversion. The main, and again, very subtle to the point where I wouldn't really wanna build a rig myself or, or use this in the future, I don't think, unless someone has some answers for me or ways to improve it, uh, where I got better skin tones maybe, a little bit less of this annoying red cast that you'll sometimes get in the, 
the deep black or gray neutrals in a lot of photos. In the shadows, you might get this weird redness. I don't know if it's just inherent to NLP conversions or just scanning film in general, but in this test, I noticed that trend. So I'm still using the same software, same negative, same everything else. All I changed was the light source and there was a slightly better conversion. It wasn't something you couldn't adjust for in NLP. It was just a bit less messing around with getting the colors right when I use the flash. Otherwise, some scans looked indistinguishable to the naked eye. It wasn't really um, that worthwhile. I even tried slide film. I did notice a little bit of a difference there. Again, it wasn't, I wouldn't call it statistically significant if this was a scientific experiment. Uh, I did notice a better histogram when using the flash. I don't know if it's because of the color temperature of the light or whatnot, but the histogram was spread out a little bit more evenly. Uh, and if you still wanna stick around and nerd out a little bit more, then uh, you tell me in the comments, what do you think you could attribute the, the quality of light to when it comes to the final output in terms of color conversions from the scans? What would be the most ideal solution? Is a flash the best we can get or is it something beyond that? And if a flash is more ideal than an LED, why? Um, some things I've heard and uh, thought about, whether it's through forums or my own experiments, is that color temperature matters. And with a flash, you're getting a cooler, maybe 6,000 Kelvin color temperature, and that might be more ideal for the orange mask in color negative film. The next thing is maybe the quality of light. It's more, I don't know, pure or something like that, because we've reached a point with LEDs that we use for scanning where they have this great rating for whether it's um, CRI or TLCI or whatever other ratings. Yeah, we can get a pretty good LED, but how do we improve beyond that? Is it a flash? In my experiments, yeah, it was a little bit better but I don't know if it's gonna be the, the best solution. Um, sure, if you build up a perfect rig and you build it to suit, you'd have a semi-permanent rig where you use a flash. I would recommend it. If you have a, an old flash lying around, if you wanna build a box with a LED just for focusing and rig it up and distance it a little bit more than I did, get a nice even diffusion using something like that or whatever diffuser you might wanna make, this is a great light source for scanning film. Uh, it's just cumbersome. So what I think uh, is that this probably isn't the most ideal solution for, for most people. If you're watching and you've built one, let me know all about it in the comments. Um, share some links if you have anything like where you've, you've shared a video maybe. I'd be keen to check out more and maybe experiment with this again down the track. But where I think the future might lie is in something else altogether. Like I said, we've reached a pretty good plateau in terms of what we can do with LED lights, but Think about the fact that most of these film scanners that labs were using since the 90s and so on were built for the job. When we're reverse engineering LED lights, video lights to, to work for illuminating film to then digitize it, it isn't really built for the job. So what I think would be a cool way forward is something I've read about in forums and heard about here and there, which is other light types like RGB lighting. What I can gather is that RGB would allow you to control the individual wavelengths of red, green, and blue to then better suit the film that you're illuminating. So with the orange mask, you might wanna tune up the certain blue wavelength and, and balance out the other two, similar to what you think about when you're doing color enlargement in the darkroom. I don't understand the science of it. Uh, it's something I've only read about and heard about on a surface level, but it's part of the reason why I wanted to make this video. I'd like to see where the next evolution is in DIY film scanning. I think it's part of what's going to keep driving film photography in the forward as you know these old machines die off. I even envision some labs might convert to using DIY rigs if we can really keep evolving this space and making it accessible. And I think that's key. Accessibility is key. I don't think this is the most accessible for, for some people rigging it up and and you know buying a flash just for that reason. You know, it's not very versatile unless you use it for event work or other things, which I do. I bought this for weddings, but yeah, I think an evolution of constant lights would be a cool way forward. If you know more about this, share your thoughts in the comments, share your uh, results from your experiments. Like I said, mine was very rudimentary and it was just a good surface level understanding of what could be achieved. But yeah, I'm really curious where the potential is for Holmes film digitization, something I'm always trying to experiment with and mess around with and share my um, findings with, with you guys on the channel. So yeah, that's all I really have for today. Just a little thought experiment, uh, flash experiment discussion. Thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it and I'll see you next time.